Hi, thanks for joining me again. And um, if this is your first time here, uh, welcome to the channel. A uh, couple of jobs to do in this episode. And the first one is I'm going to paint the wheel arch covers or the boxes. Um, as you can see, they're in a bit of a state, uh, covered in marker, and there's a couple of holes. Well, a bit of wood's missing. Um, I'm not going to bother filling that in. As I say, these these are going to be hidden away under wheel, uh, under the uh, seat boxes and the inside cupboards. Um, so you're never, not really going to see them. Um, so all I want to do is tidy them up. So first of all, I'm going to give them a coat of. Um, it's, it's what you could call size, I suppose. It's um, it's a 50-50 mix of um, PVA glue and water, and this just seals the wood, and it stops it absorbing the absorbing the paint. So I'll just give it a, a generous coat of that, and, we'll leave, and I left it overnight to dry. And then we'll give it a, a light sand over. Uh, I'm just going to sand the corners off. The rest of it was okay, um, just to smooth it out a little bit and tidy it up. Could have done this before. Um, and now I'm going to give it a give it a wipe over with a wet rag. Um, just gets rid of any of the dust. And then when that's dried, we'll give it its first coat of paint. I'm going to be using a, a foam roller on this. Um, one tip is if, you, uh, if you're if you using a roller like this, if you dampen the roller first, um, it helps to uh, load it with the paint. Uh, you don't want it soaking wet, just, uh, you know, just damp. Um, I like to use a roller on flat surfaces like this. I use it on doors and, and things. It gives it a much better, much better finish. You don't end up with brush marks. And with it being a small roller, you, you, you can handle it a lot easier. Um, no, we're not aiming to uh, get full coverage with this coat. We just want to lay a base coat down. Uh, you will be able to see the wood through this. You just want a thin layer, don't put too much on. And then we'll give that about an hour to dry. And then we'll give it another coat. Now with this coat, um, this should cover it completely. You shouldn't be able to see any wood coming through this. If you can see it at the end of this, just give it another coat of undercoat. I like to do, uh, well when I do woodwork at home, I usually do two to three undercoats before I do a top coat. So now we're going to do the top coat. Um, I should have said the undercoat is just normal household undercoat, it's nothing special. And this is um, just normal household eggshell in a brilliant white. Um, let's just paint a hard line around. I didn't buy it especially. Um, and when I do this, when I'm finished, you can see there I'm just doing a very light uh, pressure roll. Um, it just gets rid of any of the ripples. Now I left that to dry overnight, and now I'm going to give it a coat of varnish. Um, this is water based varnish. This will just protect the, the paint, stops it. Um, uh, discolouring as much as what it would normally um, and also it will protect it against chips uh, because there's nothing worse than if you just painted something and then you, you bang it with with something else and it takes a chip out of it and um, this will stop that and with it being inside the seat boxes I can imagine there will be quite a few things bashing against it And when you're ready, uh, when you've got the, as much on as you want, just use the very tip of the brush and just go in one direction. Just with applying very light pressure, this will just take out any ripples. And we'll let that dry for about uh, a couple of hours. And then I'm giving it a, a very light sand. It's a, it's a very fine sanding block. You can actually use a scotch pad just to use to do this. And then we'll give that a wipe over as well with a wet cloth just to get rid of the dust. And then we'll we just uh, rub that over just to give it a key for the top coat of uh, varnish. You can add as many coats of varnish as you want really. Mm. 
I generally do two, two or three. Now, same thing again here. Once you're happy with the amount of varnish you've got on each panel, just use very light pressure with the tip of the brush just to finish it off. And you can see the finish there on the top, and this being a pretty scrap piece of wood, um, it's quite a decent finish on that, really. So that's them done. So now we're going to do the bulkhead. And um, for the bulkhead, I was going to use or build a one with um, put foam inside, but it was going to encroach on the, the cabin area far too much. So I just used 18 mil ply, and then I had some uh, laminate under, underlay line around. So I just put that down and then coated it with some Reflectix as well. And I just glued the uh, the carpet onto it and I'm just smoothing it out just trying not to stretch it uh, just getting rid of any ripples and I just worked my way up um, and when I get about three quarters of the way up um, I lost the footage after that um, so anyway all I did was just I worked my way to the top flipped it over and then did the same on the other side and then trimmed off the excess and then glued the edges down um, it was a pretty simple job really um, I don't know whether these this um, underlay and stuff will give it any uh, any thermal properties, um, but it'll, uh, it'll give it a little bit of uh, sponginess when you're leaning against it, I suppose. <coughs> Excuse me. So, so just work your way up just nice and slowly. You don't want to stretch the carpet. Just smooth it over, make sure there's no bubbles. Now we're going to do the floor. So you can see the, the bulkhead's in position there. Um, I don't know what happened to the uh, the footage for that. Um, for me installing it and finishing it off, it just seemed to disappear. Um, I just attached that bulkhead with um, with four uh, four screws, some four self-drilling screws. So I'm just giving the floor a wash over here, just with some uh, some water and a little bit of washing up liquid in it. Um, the tape that you can see on the floor I couldn't get that up um, so I didn't bother messing about with it I thought well if it's not going to come up when I'm trying to get it up it's not going to come up when it's underneath the cut, underneath the, uh, the lino so now I'm sealing the floor as well with the same mix the same 50-50 uh, PVA and water I just went all over the floor with this um, it'll just seal this and it'll help the, the glue stick I'll stop the glue absorbing into the wood and uh, make a better job of sticking it down. So that was it all, all washed. And, oh, sorry, I should say all, uh, all sized up. And then we left it overnight to dry and then put the, uh, the lino in. And I just um, sort of roughly cut out where it needed to be. Uh, Try to leave a couple of inches excess all the way around. Just to trim it off later. So I'm just working my way around just to, you don't want to try and fit it properly at this stage, you just want to leave it some excess all the way. Now I've just folded it back over and then I'm just spraying the glue, so I'm using the same spray glue as I used for the the carpet, um, it's a, just a general, general purpose um, spray contact adhesive. And I'm using a, a large paint roller um, just to smooth this over, just to try and make sure there's no air bubbles in there, just applying, applying loads of pressure. I'm just doing a small area at a time. So I've done the bottom end turn round, now this is the top area. And then I realised that I hadn't filled in uh, a hole near the door. Uh, so I just used a piece of ply and took some mastic and just filled that in. And that did the job perfectly. It lifted up quite easily. Um, I think this stuff uh, it must cure um, after a while. So I don't wait for it to dry before I put it down. I usually put it down when it's still slightly wet. 
and then I trimmed up the edges. Oh, that bald spot of mine's getting bigger. I'll have to be having a transplant soon. And then I put some weight onto some boards um, just to make sure that that centre area, which will be a high traffic area, is well and truly stuck down. And then once it was all trimmed, I installed uh, some um, checker plate angle. Um, just drilled a few screws into it and uh, glue and screwed it in. Just finished off that edge nicely. So. And that's it for this episode. Um, so I say thank you very much for watching again. And I hope to see you in the next one. Take care now.